Paint splatters on screen revealing a series of images, a woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier penny atop a mountain. The paint drip splatters revealing text in print and braille, unsightly opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today, I want to talk about why blindness sucks in wintertime. There are so many things that change once snow hits the ground, and if you're like me and you live in the Great White North or somewhere where you see snow on a semi-regular basis, it can be quite the challenge. So today, I want to talk about all of those factors, some helpful tips and tricks for navigation, and share with you why winter isn't my favorite as a blind person. Let's dive in. If you're a guide dog user, you need to not only take care of your own needs for warmth, but also make sure your four-legged companion is warm and comfortable as well. And depending on how cold it gets, it might mean layering jackets, it might mean boots with socks in them, or if you work in extreme weather frequently, your dog may need some doggles or dog goggles. I don't have any for patients because I don't think she'd care for them very much, but there are a lot of extra things that you need to think about to keep your four-legged friend comfortable. Whenever we go out when it's cold, I try and put her in her winter boots. She is not a fan, she does not like them, but she will tolerate them because she was trained to use them. It's a bit of a process to get her into them. I'm gonna show you how that works. And putting on dog booties is not easy. This dog in particular has some sensitive feet, so I try and put them on as infrequently as possible. But in this case, because we're going to be spending some time outside, I do have to put her in her dog boots. I also put her in a variety of dog jackets and I have different layers of fleeces and sweaters and thicknesses so I can layer up depending on how cold it's going to be outside. Patients grew up in the US, so she's not used to the frigid temperatures that we get up here in Canada, and this is the best way that I can keep her comfortable and happy while we have to work outside in the snow. Let me show you putting on her dog boot and dog jacket. The jacket's pretty easy. She doesn't mind. She's been in vests and jackets since she's been puppy, so she really doesn't care. I find the collar, and then this one is really nice because it's got Velcros on her chest and on her stomach, so I just tell her stand and then it just straps around her belly and she's all ready to go. I like this one in particular because of the adjustableness. I can put a sweater underneath on particularly cold days and then she can have the fleece on top for an extra little bit of warmth. Then it's on to the dog booties. I try and make dog boots a positive experience for her despite the fact that she hates them. Hey, she, come here. Come here, sweetheart. Come on, sit. She's facing away from me because she doesn't want this. Can I have your paw, please? I know, this is no fun. It's okay. But you know why we do this, right? So your little dog toes don't get cold. Patience is pretty good natured about putting on dog boots even though she really doesn't like them. All I have to do is pick up her paw and slide it into the opening and then tighten the Velcro around her ankle. Can I have your other foot? Thank you. Don't, don't run away on me. I know, I know. Put it on, slide the toes in. And with her front paws, I have to be extra careful not to fold her dew claw back because that would be very uncomfortable. Go, that's two. You're being very good today. I'll get the rest of these on and I'll join back up with you. I also have to loosen off her harness about one notch in the winter time just to make sure I'm not squeezing her around her barrel super tight. Okay, you're all ready. Good pooch. She is making her displeasure known. Even on short outings, it means five extra things that I have to think about bringing, sometimes more. So that's a process. I wanna talk about my accommodations so that I can do the things that I need to do as a guide dog handler. Even though I'd love to wear giant warm mittens when I'm out working with my guide dog, I can't do that. Because when I'm working with patients, I have to reach into my pocket constantly and feed her kibble as a treat reward. I need to be checking my phone. I need to be doing things to help me navigate safely. And that means I need finger dexterity. So I've tried a variety of different things over the years, but finger gloves are an absolute must, even though I definitely love the warmer alternative. The next thing you'll want to consider, whether you're a guide dog user or not, 
is good boots. An investment in good boots makes a huge difference because as a blind person, you aren't necessarily going to see the level of detail everyone else around you has or know what kind of ground surface you're about to walk on. It might be snow, it might be black ice, it might be white ice, you don't know. These ones are great because they have glass embedded into the sole of the boot as well as pumice stones, so it gives you a lot of extra traction. And if you don't have good boots like that, getting a set of crampons or other snow cleats also works well to give you that little bit of extra grip and traction that you're going to need if you end up on treacherous ground surface. In many parts of the world, the color pattern of your cane means different things. For example, a red and white striped cane usually means deafblind, or a white cane with a red tip usually means visually impaired or legally blind, and a solid white cane means fully blind. But here in Canada, everybody uses the same color of canes. And the reason for that is that the red tip provides additional contrast against the snow because a fully white cane is not going to be a good alert to drivers, especially at nighttime when everything else around you is white. I do not use my colored canes in wintertime. I want to be highly, highly visible, so I use my white cane with its red tip. There are a few more challenges, but I wanna go outside and tell you about them. If you're blind or low vision, winter can mess with your visual acuity. And for many people, it reduces your functional vision significantly. For many people, it greatly reduces your contrast differentiation and the white, because it's a reflective color, can cause a tremendous amount of glare. So for many people, it can be like walking around in a whiteout all the time. Not only that, but if you have no vision, having snow on the ground completely changes the acoustics of what's around you. Everything sounds a lot more dense. It's difficult to know sometimes how close or far things are from you, and the crunch of the snow under your feet can really mess with your balance and orientation. Not only that, but if you don't shovel your walks, it can be impossible to know where curb edges are, where driveways are, or if you're walking in the middle of the street or on a sidewalk. If you have a guide dog like me who is trained somewhere where they don't have snow, it can be difficult for them to learn where those curb edges are and where they need to stop so you can orient as well. Thankfully, patients learned very quickly, but I know a lot of guide dog users have had trouble adjusting their first winter. And there's a reason that some places don't place dogs with people in the winter time because of the adjustment to how you have to navigate. If you work with a guide dog, their gait, their speed, their pull, everything is going to change because the moment you put a dog in boots or the moment they're uncomfortable or cold, everything's gonna change. They might have more or less dog distraction. They might miss cues that they otherwise wouldn't. So you have to be doubly conscious and aware of everything that's around you. I'm gonna show you side by side what patience looks like guiding in the summer versus in the winter. So you can see how vastly different it is. And you can hear how her clip-clop changes and how her gait is very different between the two. Patience, right? Forward. Here, she has stopped and she has stopped now so I have to assume I'm at a down curb but I don't know that for a fact because I have lost all of my tactile cues that I'd normally feel for with my foot to know if I was at a down curb and I'll show you what that's like with a cane in a minute. Pacey, forward! And she is very considerate when we're walking because she will try and take me around everything she can to keep me safe. But her pull is completely different. She's a lot more jerky in the winter because she's having to make a lot more split-second decisions about what's going to keep me safe and how we can best navigate as a team. Working with a cane in the winter is awful. It gets caught on everything. You never know what you're about to walk on. And even if you don't use constant contact and you move to a two point touch, there's a good chance that at some point your cane's gonna get stuck in a giant pile of snow or ice, or it's gonna slide out from under you. So it's quite complicated. And with a cane, I genuinely do not feel confident to go many places in the winter, even though I am a good cane user. It's difficult for me to know where the down curb is unless there's really clear defined parameters and everything is cleared really well. And this is partially cleared, 
but it's not perfect. Let's see if I can find the down curb. I have to move a lot slower in winter because I'm never sure what I'm about to walk on or if my cane is going to get stuck. It's getting stuck even though I'm kind of using halfway between a two-point touch and a constant contact. Did you stop shaking there, Pooch? Okay, and I think this is the street, and the only way I can tell that this is the street is there's a bunch of packed snow here now. Otherwise, I have no idea if this is a corner or not. Is this the corner, Robbie? It is. Well, good. I'm glad I found it. So I'm going to cross. towards it. Did I, is this the curb? Yep. So this just wasn't cleared? Well, it's kind of on the road where it's ambiguous as to whether or not that's the city's responsibility or the proprietor or the landlord, basically. But either way, doesn't matter who's supposed to clear it. It's still difficult for me to know whether I've drifted into the street, into a median, into a snowbank, or whether I'm about to go through whatever I'm walking on and find the curb again. In short, winter is not easy when you're a blind person. Even if you do everything to manage all of the symptoms that you can, like wearing sunglasses when there's high glare, or wearing a brimmed hat, or trying to travel only in specific hours of the day when there's less direct sun, or only moving on a cloudy day, there's a lot you have to consider that a lot of other people don't have to think about because most of us people with blindness or visual impairments are pedestrians. We're professional pedestrians and we won't drive, we can't drive cars. So it's a question of being cold, being uncomfortable and not being able to see or use a lot of the accommodations or mobility skills that we have in the same way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Patience and I had a lot of fun showing you how we get around in the snow and how I navigate safely as a blind person. You can see that it's quite the process and there's a lot more steps and a lot more consideration going into navigating safely. If you live somewhere with snow, I'd love to hear your suggestions to get around safely. Are there things that I didn't mention? Do you have any tips and suggestions? Because I want to learn as many ways to get around safely as I can and I love growing and sharing ideas as a community. It's one of my favorite parts of making YouTube videos. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Please consider supporting the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, or engaging in here or on any of my other social media platforms linked in the description. But that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. Stay warm. Bye for now.